Hi, I'm uh, John Chutzman, and today we want to talk uh, a bit about places to get stuck along the grief journey, because that's what seems to happen to us as we're going through all the various experiences. We're going to talk specifically, uh, and more importantly, about one of them, and that's forgiveness. Uh, but I, what you see here is some of the places we can get stuck along the way. Denial. You know, at first, when, when it, we have a big loss, we tend to want to deny that it's happened. You lose your job, you get, you, you're faced with divorce, uh, you got some, a mate who's terminally ill. We just don't want to believe it. It's so shocking for us. But then even afterwards, after it actually happens, we can deny how much we're hurting. And that's a place to get stuck, because if we don't acknowledge how much we're hurting, then we can't really do the process. Uh, an unwillingness to make the trip. Uh, very often men in our culture, rather than go through all the, the grief uh, experiences and healing process, uh, I want to go directly to healing. I don't want to experience all that's involved, and there's no way to do that. I don't know any way over, under, around, or through, or around grief. You have to go through it. Uh, trying to do it alone. That's the, you know, the rugged American... Uh, rugged American individualism. I can do this alone. You can't. It takes associates, friends. Uh, we need to bring our, our loss into the community of grievers for healing to take place. So you can't do it alone. You can't close the door and pull down the blinds and say, I can do this. Uh, not being willing to express your feelings. It's such a key aspect of, of, of grief is expressing what you're feeling one way or another. But if we don't do that, we're going to get stuck. Feeling safe as a victim. Some, as I said, sometimes people just prefer to remain victim, to get all the attention. But it's a trap. Unresolved issues from previous losses. If we don't deal with those unresolved issues, because a loss often brings up other unresolved issues, we can get stuck. <laughs> Attempts to bypass the pain and suffering, alcoholism, drugs, medications, whatever, uh, just to get by it, it won't work because you just simply postpone uh, the journey. <laughs> Unreleased anger, or which turns into resentment. If you're feeling angry, you've got to express it, hope, but hopefully in a positive way because you've got to release it and let it go, else it'll turn into bitterness and resentment. Uh, an inability and, or an unwillingness to forgive somebody, and we'll talk about that in this workshop, is often... Uh, not always, but often a cause of a place where you get stuck. <clears throat> Guilt. Uh, yeah, we're all we all could have done things better. We all could have said some things we should have said, or or not said some things we did. So we need to deal with guilt. And if we don't, we could end up getting stuck. <clears throat> and frankly, finally, an unwillingness to try something new. Uh, a loss in life often forces us to try new things. And if we're unwilling to do that, we're certainly going to remain stuck. But about forgiveness, <clears throat> what about it? Uh, who, who is it we might need to forgive? Well, the violator. If our loved one uh, is, is a result of somebody violating us, committing the crime, causing the accident, intruding, uh, we obviously have uh, tremendous ill feelings towards that person who did it. I had a family in... Uh, uh, up north, who, uh, whose son was killed in a snowmobile by, uh, by, a, by a young man who was riding another snowmobile, just ran into him, and, and he killed him. And the parents are obviously very upset at the person who caused the accident. So if there's somebody who did it to us, uh, anybody ever been mugged or robbed or had their house broken into, or uh, it's a tremendous violation, and it's a tremendous loss. And we're bound to have ill feelings towards that person. Uh, the medical profession. Man. Often, uh, why are we mad at them? Why are we angry with them? Why do we have ill feelings? They didn't do enough, or they were insensitive. My loved one was dying, and uh, they didn't treat, treat us with enough care and dignity for not telling us the truth. Why didn't they... Why weren't they open and honest with me? Why were you know? Why weren't they? Any number of reasons, but often we have ill feelings towards people in the medical profession. The lawyers, God help us with the lawyers. Uh, 
Uh, why are we mad at the lawyers? First of all, we're having to deal with them at a time when we're so emotionally unstable and vulnerable. Uh, I'm mad at them for not helping, for taking advantage of me. There's lots of unscrupulous people out there, and and sometimes they're in the legal profession. <clears throat> my employer, why am I angry at employer? Well, my employer says, yeah, take two days off and then come back and be all healed. Uh, not being insensitive to what I'm going through, uh, for not acknowledging the truth of my situation. Yeah, you can come back to work, but I don't want any emotion in the workplace. Oh, come on, give me a break. I had one woman who had to continue to work after the death of her husband, and when anybody would ask her, how are you doing, she would say, do you have an hour? I'll tell you how I'm doing. <laughs> most people just want to hear, fine, fine, fine. But often the employers uh, are a cause of, of our ill feelings. Church leaders. Why? Why church leaders? Uh, why do I have to go outside my faith community for, for grief support? For why, why weren't they there when I needed them? They, were, they helped me with the funeral, but then where were they when everybody else left? So many congregations, parishes, don't have grief ministries. And everybody sitting in those pews is grieving something. Uh, and one of my passions is to try to help parishes or congregations develop a, a ministry to the bereaved. For not being here for me now. For not easing the pain. People expect very often their their church, their congregation, their parish, to help them with their grief, and many are not prepared to do that. For friends, I'm angry with friends. Why? For not helping, for not understanding, for calling me too much, for best, for disappearing. Sometimes lifelong friends disappear. And you don't know why. They're embarrassed. They don't want to talk about it. A woman said, I saw a friend who just lost her husband, and I crossed the street just so I didn't have to talk to her because I didn't know what to say. What a shame. But often it happens. And the grieve, we as grievers don't know what we need anyway, but when lifelong friends disappear at a time when you need them the most, it's very hurtful. So we could be very angry with friends. Relatives. Uh, loss within a family often causes stress, stress within the family because they're not grieving. Well, they're grieving, but it, oh, by the way, they grieve differently than you do. Nobody, no two people grieve the same way for not agreeing with me, for past hurts. If the relationship was bad to start with, a loss in life isn't automatically make it better. A loss in life will not itself heal a bad relationship. So you can't, you know, don't expect it to. But often within a family, my family members don't want or need the gifts I have, and I don't have the, maybe I don't have the gifts they need. So often that's why we have to go outside our, our family circle for grief support, because often what we need is not available within the family structure. It used to be that's where it was. Family and friends did all the grief support, but very often these days those, that skill, that help is not available within a family for, for one reason or another. I'm angry with the lost loved one. They're up there with heaven and God, and I'm here left all alone. <laughs> well, you know, or why didn't you better prepare me for this? Why didn't you teach me how to write a check? Why didn't you help me learn to make decisions? Why didn't you prepare me for this? Uh, I'm angry with you for leaving me. I'm angry with you for maybe how you lived your life. I'm angry perhaps for past hurts. Maybe the relationship wasn't very good. I've had a woman say to me, I'm not grieving. It was a terrible relationship. I'm free now. It does happen. It does happen. So <clears throat> I'm angry with myself. Sometimes that's the hardest person to forgive for not doing more, for not preventing the tragedy, for things I said or didn't say, things I did and didn't do. So I could be angry with myself, and sometimes that's the hardest person in fact, to forgive. I'm angry with God. Oh, where's the bolt of lightning? You're angry with God because you be, of course, for being so unfair. Why, why me? Uh, for abandoning me. Well, for making me suffer so much with this loss. I had a man, somebody said, oh, you should be angry with God. A gentleman uh, took his wife into Munson and she had anemia and they kept her overnight and 
as he went back home to Mancelona, he got a call that she had passed. He was livid. Second marriage for both. They were both recovering alcoholics. They really were helping each other along the journey, and now God took his mate away. And he was in the chapel screaming his lungs out at God. He thought he was alone. Happened to be a priest or minister, and he said, oh, excuse me, uh, I, I was just praying. <laughs> Because he learned in AA that any conversation with God is prayer. And I think he's right. And oh, by the way, if your God can't stand the heat of your anger, get yourself a new God. God understands the anger. So sometimes we are angry with the way we've been treated. So there's any number of people we could be upset about. The violator, the medicals, the legals, church leaders, employees, friends, relatives, the person who passed or who divorced me, or made me lose my job, myself, God, anybody else? Who else could we be angry at? I certainly haven't covered them all, have I? Insurance? Sometimes uh, insurance people, paperwork. Social Security. Social Security. I think my wife's last Social Security check that they didn't have right Okay. okay. Social Security. Any of those things we have to go through and at a time when we're <coughs> suffering so much. There's any number of people mm -hmm. along the way who we could be. Go ahead. One person or one group that they got upset with is the Postal Service. Mm -hmm. Why don't you know my loved one has died and you're uh, still bringing uh, me their mail? Uh, <coughs> and it's something you don't think <coughs> about until yeah. you keep getting that piece of mail and it just keeps wow yeah you bring to mind one that drove me up the wall he my son had a, an ira which was cashed in we cashed it in paid all the taxes on it and everything but he for some reason when they paid it out in full there was one penny left and every month i'd get a letter from the investment company oh giving me a status of to Mark, you know, John Mark Judgment for one penny. I sent notes back and I said, look, you're spending 40 some cents to tell me I got a penny. <laughs> and they wouldn't stop. Finally, you know, I, I don't know what finally happened. They must have <laughs> took them a year, over a year to catch on. Stop sending me, stop sending Mark things for a penny. Unbelievable. Yeah, I know what you mean. So these, these are people who could end up helping us get stuck along the way. Some, some myths about forgiveness. Forgiveness, forgiving is not forgetting. I've had a man say to me once, you know, I thought I forgave this person for doing what they did to me, but I still remember it. So I guess I haven't forgotten or I haven't forgiven. I said, no, no, wait a minute. We've gone through life with this forgive and forget, forgive and forget. Does that mean if I don't forget, that if I've forgotten, I don't, or if I have forgive, forgotten, I haven't forgiven? No, not at all. But yet we put those two words so close together. It may be a loss in life that you need to remember. It may be important, but it doesn't mean you haven't forgiven. And yet we think that because I haven't forgotten, I still am, haven't forgiven. Not so. Forgiving is not forgetting. It's not condoning. If I forgive you, it doesn't mean I'm saying what you did is okay. But some people will think that. That if I forgive you, that means I say what you did was okay. Not at all. It's not absolving. Maybe justice still has to be carried out. I think perhaps it does have to be carried out. It's not absolving you from the price of what you did to me. It's not a matter of self-sacrifice. Oh, my religion says I must forgive you, so I'm going to be... And that isn't what it's about either. It's not a matter of self-sacrifice. Most importantly, if it's a serious hurt, if you've been hurt by somebody, forgiving them is not a one-time, clear-cut decision. Some authors say it's a lifelong process. And maybe we've got to keep struggling to find forgiveness in our hearts. But forgiving, especially a serious hurt, it's not a one-time, oh, I forgive you, that's okay. In the meantime, we're still hurting inside. 
some of the illusions of not forgiving. If it weren't for this hurt, life would be perfect. Oh, really? Like, this is the only thing keeping me from happiness. Come on. I'm the good one. The person who hurt me is the bad one. Oh, is there anybody in this room who's never needed to be forgiven? <laughs> Haven't we all hurt people? Can you go through life without hurting people or being hurt by people? It's what we do. So the person who hurt me, they're not all bad, and I'm certainly not all good, but yet often that's the illusion we hang on to. That's a bad person because they hurt me. I was powerless when hurt, but now I'm in control because I'm withholding forgiveness. In the meantime, the person couldn't care less. <laughs> we think we've, we've got some kind of power over them when the only one I'm hurting is who? Me. Me. I'm the one who's hanging on to this hurt. I'm the one who's got the, bo the ball around my ball and chain around my leg because I'm hanging on to the hurt. And I'm thinking, well, this is a power I have. Now I'm in control. But the person who hurt me couldn't care less. So one of the other illusions, I was hurt, but I'll never be hurt again. Want to bet? <laughs> Do you really think you can get through this life without being hurt or injured by anybody? It's part of the journey. It's part of the journey. We do it to each other. Forgiveness does not require an apology. Some people will say, well, wait a minute, I can't forgive them. They haven't apologized. That's beyond our control. As long as we would be willing to, to forgive them if, if they apologize. Maybe they're dead, so they can't apologize. Uh, should a person put themselves in, in harm's way? Suppose it was an abusive husband. Does the woman put herself in harm's way to try to get an apology? No. So apology, that's up to God, up to the other. It's not up to us. So you don't need to be dependent on getting an apology in order to forgive somebody. Be nice, but it won't always happen. Forgiveness is not needing grudges, resentments, hatred, self-pity. It's not needing those things. They're tremendous burdens to carry around. Grudge, I have a grudge against that person. I have bitterness, resentment, hatred, self-pity. What, what a way to go through life. But by not forgiving, that's what we carry with us. Forgiving is no longer wanting to punish. Let somebody else do that. That's not up to me. They... they uh, interview people who witnessed the execution of their child's murder. And I don't know how you forgive somebody who's killed your child, but it's so interesting when you see some of these people interviewed after the execution, and they'll say, the reporters will ask them, well, did it help you? And they'll say, no, I wanted to see the person killed again and again, and it doesn't. And yet, in those rare instances where you see the parent having forgiven the person, you sense a real peace. There's peace in that. It's very interesting. Again, anything I share with you here is not meant to say that forgiveness is easy, because it isn't, especially with the serious hurt. Forgiveness takes time and can be difficult, will be difficult if it's a if it's a serious hurt, if it's a serious injury. It's a choice and can't be forced. It's not a matter of programming our kids to be forgiving. It really has to come from the heart. It has to be an internal decision. It's got to be a choice, free will choice. And as I said, it's internal. It's not just saying the words, oh, I forgive you. That's okay. <coughs> In the meantime, inside, we're seething with hurt and resentment and bitterness. It's got to come from the heart if it's going to do me any good. It's letting go. It's a voluntary act, decision, or choice about how I deal with the past. Let me ask you a question. Why would I let something that happened in the past, over which I have absolutely no control, ruin the only thing I really have, 
And that's the precious present moment. Why am I letting something that had already happened over which I, and I can't change it, ruin the only thing I really have now, and that's the present moment. That's what we do. We let something that's already happened ruin, carry, bury me in bitterness, resentment, and judgment, ruining the present moment. It's really kind of crazy. Forgiving is knowing that the punishment of them won't heal us. That isn't what it's about. Uh, if there's one message you can give to somebody, a friend, or somebody in hospice who you, you know is stuck in unforgiveness, perhaps it's this message. Forgiving, forgiveness is something I do in my own interest. Because I'm the one who's, who's tacked the ball and chain onto my leg. And I can't possibly climb the mountain of life. I can't possibly grow if, as long as I'm chained to this past hurt. Forgiving is something I must do in my own interest. I know if you're Christian or whatever your religion is, you should do it out of a sense of love of other. And that's a good reason. But I got to tell you, this is also a good reason. It's something I do for my own health. Giving up, it's giving up uh, the angry picture of the wrongdoer as unworthy, unacceptable, or unforgivable. Somebody told me, if you know all the past action, all the reasons, all the actions that led up to this act, if you know all the future consequences of it, if you know all the people it affected and how it affected them, then judge. I don't know any of that. How can I possibly judge? I, got, I can't hang on to this picture of the, of the person who hurt me as being unacceptable or unforgivable. Am I unforgivable? It's giving up our view of ourself as totally righteous, which I'm certainly not, and the wrongdoer is totally unrighteous. It's giving up my demand for perfect behavior, perfect justice, perfect resolution, and perfect retribution. We're looking for a, a perfection that doesn't exist in life. We're all humans. We make mistakes. It's all part of the journey. Giving up revenge and recrimination, brooding and resentment. Why should I go through life carrying? Carrying. I'm a, my aunt came to me after my mom died and saying, oh, Johnny, Johnny, I wish your mom and I had made peace before she passed. They were estranged for two or three years. I don't know why. I don't know why, but they didn't talk to each other. I'll, I'll see it within families. I'll say, somebody will tell me I haven't talked to my sister in 32 years. Why? I don't remember why. Or over the smallest thing, it was crazy. Uh, it's giving up revenge and recrimination, brooding and resentment. If you want a definition of forgiveness, this is one of the best ones. It's giving up my need for a perfect past. <laughs> Who's had a perfect past? We've all been hurt. Move on. Let go. Yet that's what we're hoping for. That's why we're still stuck in unforgiveness. It's freeing up energy. Grudges, resentment, self-pity consume energy. When we're stuck in unforgiveness, we're burning energy, keeping ourselves tied to a past loss. It's moving on climbing the mountain of life. Forgiveness is a sign of my own, of your own positive self-esteem. I don't need to hold you in unforgiveness. I don't need to feel powerful by not forgiving you. That's crazy. I think enough of myself that I am going to forgive you. It's a sign of your own positive self-esteem. Forgiving is something I do for me. And again, if you can help people along the way who you know are stuck not forgiving something, maybe you can begin to convince them that they're going to be far better off. They will be far better off by letting go. By letting go. Forgiveness. Uh, the University of Wisconsin has established a forgiveness institute. 
They thought it was an important enough issue in human growth and development that they established an institute in Madison, brought in experts from all over the world, from all fields, uh, spiritual, religious, psychological, et cetera, et cetera, uh, trying to understand forgiveness and why it's important and what can it do to help humanity. And they came up with a definition which I'd like to share with you. I think it's a pretty good definition. Forgiveness, they say, is a willingness. It isn't an act. It isn't a completed act. It isn't something that's done and done and done, run and done. It's a willingness to abandon one's right to resentment, negative judgment, and indifferent behavior. In other words, you hurt me, and I have a right to those feelings, but it's a willingness to abandon them because it, it's my right while fostering, you know, fostering means continuing, working on it. I'm while fostering, oops, while fostering undeserved, undeserved qualities of compassion, generosity, and even love. While fostering, oh, okay, talk, and even love to somebody who unjustly injured me. It's a work in process. Undeserved qualities. A gentleman said, well, what do you mean undeserved? Well, in God's eyes, they are deserved. But in our eyes, if you look on the you know, justice, justice system, they're undeserved. But they are undeserved. Compassion, generosity, and yes, and even love. So tell me it's not hard to do. <laughs> it is very hard to do. I was at a retreat in, uh, in, uh, Gail in uh, Petoskey. Uh, and it was, uh, uh, I thought it was going to be a, a, an Ignatian silent retreat, and it turned out to be a uh, charismatic. <laughs> I didn't have a, it wasn't a weekend of silence, but they did a session on forgiveness. And the retreat master said, what do we do when we're hurt? We push the person away from us and we hang on to the hurt. He said, we should be doing just the opposite. We should be pushing the person to us and they're hurt away. Tell me that's not hard. That's not hard. It's really, but that's what it's all about. And I tell you, when, it was such a beautiful retreat. When I left that retreat, charismatics, the whole weekend of singing, and, and I said, I've been in a cocoon of love. <laughs> it was something special. But I thought it was a good uh, definition. Just as treating people as they deserve, mercy I think is treating people better than they deserve. <laughs> and if you're a Christian, that's certainly what Jesus' attitude, Jesus' attitude, your leader certainly had that, that approach, constant. We're called to go beyond the law. We're called to go towards mercy and compassion and love. Uh, the gift of forgiveness freely given to us. The question is, do you see yourself as forgivable? Because if you don't, it's going to be very hard to forgive others. Uh, if you're walking around in feelings of unworthiness, of guilt, uh, of unforgiveness, then you're, you're, going to be, it's, you're going to be very tough on everybody else. But if you see yourself as having made mistakes and, and being forgiven by your creator, then you're going to have a different attitude towards people. Uh, the gift of forgiveness freely given to us must be passed on to others. That's really our challenge. I was at a, uh, a, a ser religious service, weekday service, uh, and the, the minister was doing a homily on uh, forgiveness. And he said, we've got it, forgiveness, we got it all wrong. We spend our lives seeking God's forgiveness, which is always freely available. There's nothing we can do to make God love us less. There's nothing we can do to let God love us more when we should be spending our lives offering forgiveness to everybody else. There's a scripture passage, again, if you're, if you're into scripture, about coming to the altar with your sacrifice. And if you haven't made peace with your brothers and sisters, put down your sacrifice, go make peace, and then come back. Because uh, that really is our charge. We need to really be bearers of forgiveness for everybody else. It's not something we do. 
something we discover, the power of God's grace welling up in us. It does take divine assistance. It might very well be a lifelong process. Maybe we have to say, I'm working on it. I haven't forgiven you, but I'm working on it. Comments, questions? Um, Oops. I was thinking of forgiveness and your story about uh, your son yep. and the hospice and the doctors. Yep. Um, you had to forgive yep. the medical community, yep. but you also took action to correct something yes. you thought was wrong. I, uh, uh, in fact, it was here, and it was Judy Goodrich, when I, I just, uh, we had just gone through that with Mark, and uh, I was telling her, and she said to me, uh, "Well, John, I guess you're just going to have to forgive the hospital." And she was right. I had to uh, express my anger. I had to release it, but I still had to forgive. But you corrected a, a well, wrong. I used my anger, my upset, hopefully for a positive impact, to make sure the staff of the hospital knew the impact they had on us by their actions. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I could still be carrying around bitterness and resentment if I, if I chose to. But no, I, yeah. yeah. No, you're right. The other, the other part of forgiveness that I find the toughest, if, if someone hurts my children, I, I can sometimes, I can take words that hurt, you know, but if, if the wrong is done against my family, I really sometimes have a hard time forgiving. Yep. Yeah. Hard time forgiving. Yeah. That's why I say, and I understand, and. Uh, it's, it's also hurts not only against us, but against those we love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they require forgiveness. That's right. But you know, again, nothing I've shared is meant to say that it's easy, because it isn't. But yet it's so critical for us. It's so critical for us. Do you feel you have to verbally say, I forgive you to the person? Or is it just your, within your heart that you... Well, if there's a ch we'll talk about it a bit. If there's a chance for reconciliation, you should. We'll talk about the fact that reconciliation isn't required. The person may be dead or not willing or whatever. It doesn't mean I can't forgive. But if there's a chance for reconciliation, then that forgiveness needs to be voiced. Sure. I think that we're our own worst enemy, too. We have to forgive ourselves. Yeah. We that's so yeah. hard to do because yeah. we are our own worst critic. We can see, yeah. it, you know, we're there, but like you said, you can't, if you had known all the different things that were going to happen and had planned for it, you maybe wouldn't have that guilt and that, all that upset, but you can't, you're kind of just going with the flow of things. Yeah. And how are you going to know what action to, I mean, there's so many unknowns. Exactly. But and that's, but that's how you need to, that's the basis for your forgiveness, the fact that I couldn't possibly have known all the future consequences mm -hmm. of an action. Mm -hmm. And it was a wrong action, and okay, I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. And do I learn from it? Right. Yeah. But just because you made a mistake doesn't mean you never had the best of intentions. That's right. And, and your creator knows your intentions. Your creator is all forgiving, loves you dearly, birth to death. I believe that. Uh, well, let me go get, get back to get back to uh, how do I know when I'm ready when you're ready how do we know when we're ready to think about forgiveness when anger is more of an enemy than a friend in other words anger is actually hurting me I'm so caught up in anger that it's destroying my life, that I'm getting physically sick, that it's ruining relationships. Anger is, there's no emotion that's bad. There's no emotion that's evil. Emotions are emotions. Uh, there's no emotion as bad as the stuffing of the emotion. That's what's bad. Uh, anger is a normal human defensive uh, re emotion. It's 
not good or bad of itself. But when we hang on to it for so long that it becomes bitterness and resentment, that's the evil. So when it's when I'm more in living in anger, that's a sign that hey, wait a minute. Uh, when hurt dominates my life, when all I can talk about or think about is the hurt that I've encountered. When I'm stuck in anger while the person who hurt me, they're doing fine. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm withholding uh, forgiveness and they don't really care. Something's wrong with that picture. Uh, when anger's hurting my relationship with others. I'm so angry and nobody wants to associate with me because all I can talk about is, and you've met people like that. Uh, when I look backwards more than forwards, am I stuck in the past or am I thinking about the future? Why don't I want to spend my life Somebody said, you are where your mind is. And if the past doesn't exist and my mind's in the past, why do I want to live in a place that doesn't exist? And that's what the past is. The future doesn't exist either, but uh, how about just being in the present moment, the precious present moment, instead of the past? When I'm restless, when I need some peace, when this, this hurt is dominating my life, it's crazy to, to ruin this, this beautiful gift of life we've been given by being stuck in hurt and pain and resentment and bitterness. Uh, a, a possible process, a possible way to forgive along the way. First of all, acknowledging the, acknowledging the truth of what happened. Uh, if we don't, if you're not honest, about the fact that you're hurt, you say, oh, that's okay, no problem. I'm all right. But inside you're seething. That's a problem because uh, you're not going to be able to address the issue. You're not going to be able to come to terms with it. So the first step is you got to be truthful about what happened to yourself and maybe to the person who injured you. They may not know. You mean what I said really upset you that much? Yeah. I felt that it was a betrayal. I didn't know that. Oh, let's talk about it. So acknowledging the truth has lots of possible benefits. Uh, expressing your anger, resentment, or bitterness in a healthy way. Yeah, I'm, I'm really upset about what happened to me. Uh, and you know, you got to express it. You got to get it out. It's got to be, even if it's not to the person who injured you, to friends and family to support people in writing somehow, express it. You got to want to be free. Do you really want to be free of the hurt or not? Well, I don't know. It's I've sort of become friends with this, this hurt, this pain. It's sort of become my uh, intimate friend. I've been living with it so long. Do you really want to be free of it or not? Uh, you got to see other people just as much a child of God, of the Creator, as you are. You really have no right to judge anybody else. And uh, I know our Bill of Rights Constitution talks about all people being equal. I think the only place we're really equal is in our Creator's eyes. We are all children of God. Knowing that we all need forgiveness, again, have you gone through life without ever hurting anybody? Maybe you have. I don't know. I haven't met anybody yet who's willing to admit that. So we've intentionally or not, uh, we all we should require accountability, justice. If somebody did something wrong, they should have to pay the price, but hopefully directed at new life. In other words, hopefully they become a better person because of it. If somebody's sent to jail for some period of time, well, I know our penal system doesn't actually rehabilitate people, but that's what you would hope. Or you would hope, I think, somewhere along the, the way, one of my sons was, the morning driving to work was caught for speeding or something, and because they smelled alcohol, he was thrown in a jug for one night. Changed his life. <laughs> so you hope that the price you pay for some crime 
ends up making the person a better person. My, my daughter went through 15 years of a terribly abusive marriage, uh, mostly emotional, but sometimes physical. I hated the man. She finally had enough courage and, and, and uh, counseling to say enough is enough and divorce him. And I hated him for what he did, but then I ended up just feeling pity for him because with two daughters and a loving wife here, he threw away the love of three beautiful women. So my hatred or resentment or bitterness turned into really pity. He remarried, and now he's uh, he's getting help for, uh, he's beyond help for Alzheimer's. But, uh, I mean, accountability, yes, he, she finally divorced him, but you hope that that act ended up making him a better person. And I think perhaps it did. Hoping for reconciliation. Reconciliation is not a requirement of forgiveness. You're willing, you're hopeful, but it may not happen. But as long as you're open to the possibility of reconciliation, that's all that's required. Just like grief, forgiveness is a process, maybe a lifelong process. Pain, anger, resentment, withdrawal, uh, brooding, self-evaluation, reflection, uh, belly of the whale, Gethsemane, dark night of the soul when you're in the pits. Then finally, reaching out, confrontation, caring, reconstruction, acceptance, recognition, release, restitution, etc. But that could be a lifelong process. But it's a worthwhile journey. It's a worthwhile journey. I won't go through that. Comments or questions? You're all dumbfounded. <laughs> it isn't easy, is it? Very thought provoking. A lot of stuff to say. Yeah. Have you ever been in a position? where you have not been able to forgive? Yeah. I th as I say, I think there's things that I'm willing to, I'm working on. Sure. And I think my view is that, you said it, are, uh, it's a matter of intention. And just as that definition of forgiveness by the University of Wisconsin said fostering, willingness, I'm working on it. And I think as long as we have that attitude, uh, I think that's the key. I, I think our Creator knows we're imperfect, uh, but but knows also knows our intention. So I think you know the one with my son-in-law was probably one that took me a long time. It took me a long because I had terribly ill feelings, the way he treated my daughter for some 15 years. And only after it was over, only after he remarried, only, you know, when I came to terms. And then that unforgiveness, that bitterness, that resentment turned to, to pity. It took, took a long time. Sure. Especially, it's awfully difficult to f forgive when it continues, which is what he was doing to her. So I was only able to after it was over. Any, anything else? It isn't easy. It should be thought-provoking because we hold on to those illusions. We have those misunderstandings, and we don't really realize it's in our own best interest. But, you know, my, my view of life is we're all climbing this mountain of life, and we're all taking unique paths up the, up the mountain, and we're trying to help each other. I fall down and scratch my knee, and I'm hanging on by my fingernails, or... I'm going around in circles rather than up, or I'm going down rather than up. Uh, and then we sort of help each other up the way, but unforgiveness just means I'm trying to climb the mountain with a ball and chain on my, on my leg, and that's crazy. It's holding me back from personal growth and peace. So it is something we do in our own best interest. You may know people who are stuck in unforgiveness and 
the uh, the resentment and bitterness they walk around with and the brooding and it shows in their demeanor they're carrying around a big burden and it's ruining the only thing they really have the precious present moment and that's that's a shame that's a shame again nothing i said is meant to make it seem easy but significant important uh, vital yes but again accepting the fact that it may take a lifetime even if that's forgiving yourself uh, yes and you have to forgive yourself because it starts with you as i said i said and i'll say it again if you don't see yourself as forgivable it's going to be awfully difficult for you to forgive others uh, Every attack is a cry for help. Somebody who's wounded will strike out and hurt other people because it takes the spotlight off their own hurt. So when you somebody's attacking you, view that as a cry for help. So somebody needs forgiveness. So yourself, it has to start with you. That's one of the problems with being raised in a uh, culture of you're not good enough. Uh, and so many of us have been raised in that, you know, you need to be redeemed kind of attitude because you were born or you are not good enough and we are all cr wonderful creatures of our creator. And if we don't see ourselves as beautiful creations of our creator, we're going to see ourselves perhaps as unforgivable. And that's that's got to change if you're going to be healthy and be forgiven. We are all beautiful creations of our creator and given great gifts and I'm going to tip your bushels <laughs> thank you so much